of all the auto brands on the road today, only one has been named the best auto brand for six straight years. That brand is Mazda. Come shop and save on the award-winning lineup of new Mazdas right now at Baton Rouge's Mazda dealer, Team Mazda on Airline. Hi, business owners. Phase three. Woohoo! But do your customers know you're back? Well, that's where the Clarence Bug Show and Pelican Broadcasting can help. Right now, we've got great rates on advertising packages to help you get the word out. Shoot me an email at bugsclarence at gmail.com. Or better yet, call me up. I'd love to talk with you. 225-485-6839. Let's get together and make phase three the best it can possibly be. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me! It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just gotta know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just gotta know the right people. You can know the right people too. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Welcome to today's post-Groundhog Day edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Just so you know, all of America yesterday tuned in to Puxatani Field and said, oh, six more weeks of winter. Well, Parrish, the resident Nutria at the Audubon Zoo, disagrees. Says get ready for sunshine. So, unlike so many things in life these days, we'll get to find out who told us the truth, and who lied to us. Now, say what you will about what it says about us when we are gauging truth from fiction in between a groundhog and a nutria. Just when you thought our world couldn't get any crazier, right? All week long, we have started the show talking about the fallacy of climate change and the idiotic approaches to fixing a non-problem. There were some interesting developments last week. Toyota Motors, arguably every year, either number one or number two in global auto sales, had their end of the year conference. Now, as you well know, Toyota has been producing electric vehicles for over 20 years now. The Prius has become a part of their regular automotive lineup. You've heard with the advent of the Biden administration how we're going to have this huge green push, how they are on the verge now of swapping all government vehicles that are internal combustion in nature and replacing them with electric vehicles. Well, a Kia Toyota, not Toyota, the CEO of Toyota Merck Motors is a Kia Toyota, T-O-Y-O-D-A. And in his remarks last week at their year-end conference, a Kia Toyota, said, I don't think y'all realize what you're doing with this 
massive push to electric vehicles. The problem is, where is all this electricity, additional electricity, going to come from? He proposes, maintains, that if you look at states like California, where just last year we saw them having to resort to rolling brownouts and blackouts because they didn't have enough electricity to serve all the customers. With the advent of all these electric vehicles, you do realize these cars don't run on little unicorns in the trunk on a treadmill generating electricity. You've got to have electricity to constantly charge these vehicles. And of course, as Mr. Toyota explained last week, to generate all this extra electricity that's going to be needed for all these electric vehicles that we're courtesy, courtesy of the government going to all be forced to buy in the near future, you're going to have to fire up all the coal-fired electric producers, all the nuclear-powered producers, to have enough electricity for this. Oh, but wait a minute, Clarence. We, we going solar. Joe Biden, just last week, John Kerry said, all you people working in the oil and gas industry, y'all made bad choices. But we're going to help you make better choices. You can build solar panels. We're going solar. Okay, well, let's talk about that, shall we? Here is what they don't tell you. Right now, wind and solar combined only account for 17% of the electricity in this country. So when you add all of these electric vehicles and all this other stuff, green stuff that they are promoting, you realize how much more electricity you're going to have to generate from solar? Now, here's what they don't tell you. Here's what they won't tell you. And here's what these dummies, because they want to be green, may not even know themselves. Solar panels, the construction of them, may be one of the worst things for the environment in all of recent memory. 2018. Michael Schellenberger, a Time Magazine, quote, hero of the environment and an award winner for publishing green books, wrote in Forbes Magazine that the problem of solar panel disposal is going to explode with full force in two or three decades and wreck the environment because it's a huge toxic waste generator. He was citing comments by the general manager of Nanjing Materials, that's a recycling company in China. Mr. Tian called his country's solar power industry a quote, ticking time bomb. Now, this really isn't new news. Of course, those on the left either hadn't been keeping up with it or they don't want you to know this. In 2013, the Associated Press published an article saying that the heavily subsidized, let me say that another way, the companies that get all your tax dollars, were creating millions of pounds of polluted sludge and contaminated water that's really, really tough to dispose of. Let me bring it home for you. Remember Solyndra? Remember the solar company that President Obama promised, oh, it's going to revolutionize industry in this country, and we need to give them half, over half a billion dollars of your money for them to operate. 
so the Obama administration gave them $535 million of your money and they went out of business in four years. Now, aside from taking over a half billion dollars of your money, what did they leave us with? About 12 and a half million pounds of hazardous waste. Much of it included cadmium, which is a cancer-causing agent. But they tell us that it's green, it's clean, it's lean, it's mean energy. Here's something else they won't tell you. Solar panels and constructing them generate 300 times more toxic waste per unit of energy than nuclear power plants. Let me say this another way. Take a nuclear power plant and a solar panel. Each one, if it produces 10 watts of energy, 100 watts of energy, 500,000 watts of energy, whatever amount. When you compare the two, solar panels generate 300 times more toxic waste than a nuclear power plant. Add to that, there's something called nitrogen trifluoride. It's called NF3 that's used to construct solar panels. The increase of NF3 over the last 25 years has risen 1,057%. Here's the problem. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says NF3 is 17,000 200 times more potent than carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas. Now, you remember the leftists, the environmentalists, the green people have told us, oh, the greenhouse gases are killing the planet. That's, uh, we got to get away from that. It's killing the planet. But there's been an over 1,000% increase over the last 25 years in manufacturing solar panels using NF3, which is 17,200 times more potent than carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas. And yet, Joe Biden, John Kerry, and all the rest of these Green Deal people will have you believe solar power is going to save the planet. It's going to save the planet for the children. And all the while, they will be polluting it beyond belief. And if that weren't bad enough, they're going to do it by taking your money. That's what they won't tell you. That's what they don't tell you. That's what they don't want you to know. It ain't about saving the planet, y'all. It's about control and it's about money and power. Do your homework. Do your own research and stop taking what these clowns feed you and swallowing it hook, line, and sinker. Who knows? By doing so, you just might save the planet. <gasps> There's a thought. First break of hour one. We'll get her done. We'll talk a little hypocrisy when we come back. Right here on the Clarence Bug Show, only on the Pelican. Stay close.
I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with the Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Team Honda wants to thank you for once again making us Louisiana's number one new car dealer by offering you never-before-seen savings. For the first time ever, get 0% financing up to 60 months on some of your favorite Honda models. Get thousands in savings right now at Team Honda on Segan Lane. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. Your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Welcome back to today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. You know, um, as you get older in life and you witness more and more things, conventional wisdom says you get used to certain things. You almost expect certain things because you've seen it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Doesn't make it any easier to deal with, but... You've seen this play before, so you typically know what's coming. But hypocrisy is one of the things that I don't care how many times you see it, you never get used to it. Unless, of course, you have been indoctrinated. You grew up not knowing the truth. And if all you've ever known is a fallacy, then when you encounter people that are hypocritical about certain things, it really doesn't bother you all that much. I guess part of my cross to bear is having grown up in an age where honesty was something that was expected. Hypocrisy was something that was frowned upon. And people generally educated themselves to the point where they could smell a hypocrite coming a mile away. But the hypocrisy in government continues to just ratchet itself up to an entirely different level. For example, President Joe Biden last week on Monday proclaiming that the United States, quote, 
has never lived up to its founding principles. We've never fully lived up to the founding principles of this nation. But our administration is committed to finishing the work left undone. It's long past time to confront deep racial inequities and systemic racism to fulfill the promise of America for all. Meanwhile, last week, in signing an executive order on racial equality and celebrating Black History Month, he was at it again. Quote, we've never fully lived up to the founding principles of this nation to state the obvious that all people are created equal and have a right to be treated equally throughout their lives. Now let me get this straight. You're lecturing America on racial equality when in fact you're the guy that co-wrote the 1994 crime bill that locked up tens of thousands of black men. You're the guy that co-wrote the bill that destroyed tens of thousands of black families. A bill, by the way, that you were so proud of, you nicknamed it the Lock the SOBs Up Bill. Look it up. Go to Duck Duck, look it up. And now you are gonna preach to me about America not living up to racial equality. <laughs> if you weren't so big a hypocrite, well, I'm, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that alone. But I'm not supposed to know that you are the guy responsible for locking all these people up. And now you're the guy that's going to fix it. <laughs> I guess there's something to be said about if you catch a thief in a store that's pretty good at what he does. Well, why not hire the guy to be head of security? I mean, after all, he knows all about thievery. You are now going to preach about racial equality. Not to mention the fact that for 47 years, you sat your sorry behind in Congress and in government and never did a thing to help black folk. But now you're going to preach about racial equality. I guess I'm not supposed to know these things. I'm supposed to be a good little Democrat, fall in line, and, and, and cheer on Joe for fixing the ills of America, even though you were one of the major contributors. You see how they play you? You see what they think of you? Now just imagine, if you will, if it was a conservative, let's just say for the record, Senator Donald Trump, was the one that co-authored this bill that locked up tens of thousands of black men destroying tens of thousands of black families. And he came out preaching to you about racial equality. What do you think the media, social media, and Democrats would have to say about this. That's rhetorical. You don't have to answer. We all know the answer to the question. We all know. And for the sake of the conversation, I would have a hell of a lot more respect for Joe Biden if he were to come out first and foremost and apologize for his part in all of this. You know, America, back in 1994, I did something that at the time I thought was right. But it ended up incarcerating unjustly tens of thousands of my fellow Americans of color. 
It ended up ruining tens of thousands of families of color because I co-wrote this bill. I thought I was doing right at the time, but I now know better. I sincerely apologize and I beg your forgiveness and I'm going to do everything within my power from this point on to make it right. I can respect that. I can respect that. But when a clown pulls a, what is arguably a criminal act against people that look like me and now you want to preach to me about racial equality and injustice, I got a hard time swallowing that pill, Captain. I got a hard time following, swallowing that one because it shows that you're nothing but a hypocrite. Of course, now, it ain't the first time you've been a hypocrite, and my gut tells me it probably is not going to be the last time that you're a hypocrite. For example, Joe Biden, second day in office, signs this executive order that any time you own federal property in a federally owned building, you got to wear a mask. How long did it take before old Joe signing executive orders in front of reporters ditched the mask? Anybody in this administration, anybody in the federal building, period, you got to wear a mask. I'm signing it into law. And yet, your press secretary, Pasaki, in the middle of the press briefing, takes off the mask, keeps on talking. Dr. Anthony Fauci answers one question, takes the mask off, takes the rest of the questions. And the list goes on and on and on. But I thought this was supposed to be a federal mandate. You're in a federal building. You're a federal employee. But where's your mask? The level of hypocrisy, if it weren't coming for the left, I would say is astounding. But that's what they do. One set of rules for me. Another set of rules for thee. But you know what's saddest of all? Is that you and I, Democrat, Republican, Black, White, Latino, Asian, Gay, Straight, Religious, Agnostic, Atheist, my fellow Americans, we let these clowns get away with this crap. We let them get away with it. We're told, oh, you might need to wear two masks. But in the middle of a press briefing to tell us, mind you, about the state of the pandemic in America, you take yours off. <laughs> you see how they play you? And more important, you see what they think about you? Well, these idiots won't notice. They don't have that much sense to realize. I signed a mandate saying you got to wear a mask in a federal building. But these dummies don't realize I'm in a federal building. I ain't got no mask on. They won't notice. <laughs> At some point, you'll wake up and realize in the words of Rictus, they think we're stupid. They think they can lose us in here. And I'll be the first one to tell you, they might be right. Just saying. Bottom of the hour. Got to get this break out of the way. When we come back, <laughs> just when you thought. I am getting closer and closer to making it an everyday segment. Now that's just stupid. Got some more coming for you next on the Clarence Bugs Show.
only on the Pelican. Stay close. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugé, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugé Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Jaguar Nation, we need your help in masking up Louisiana. Mask up or slow the spread of COVID-19. During this time, we must continue to wear a mask. Wash your hands and practice social distancing. It's important that we continue to abide by the CDC's guidelines to stop the spread. Jaguar Nation, we challenge you to mask up. Jags. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Spiders. Premier Pest Services. Welcome back to today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. You know, it um, is a sad commentary in our country that in the year 2021, we still struggle to deal with issues of race. Something that we would like to think we would have gotten over a long time ago. And sadly, you know me, I am a glass half full kind of guy. I prefer to look at things that way as opposed to, oh, the glass is half empty. It's going to be all gone before you know it. But I'm starting to wonder if we will ever be able to reconcile the problems of race in this country, due in large part to the fact that, one, for a lot of people, it is a mechanism to make money and maintain power. And two, many of these people have now infiltrated school systems. And as part of their agenda, they gin up things to keep us at each other's throats. For example, <laughs> the San Francisco, and that the first two words tells you, all right, here we go. We're going to lurch far left. The San Francisco Unified School District says acronyms are a, quote, symptom 
of white supremacy culture. You heard me right. The San Francisco Unified School District, the SFUSD, says acronyms are a symptom of white supremacy culture. And as a result, its performing arts department is going to do away with the acronym VAPA, V-A-P-A, Visual and Performing Arts. They're going to get rid of that acronym because it's a symptom of white supremacy. And instead, they are going to use the name SFUSD Arts. <laughs> They're replacing one acronym with another. Wink, wink. Quote, according to the director of their department, quote, the use of so many acronyms within the educational field often tends to alienate those who may not speak English to understand the acronym. Thus, it is a part of a white supremacy culture. The SFUSD Arts Department is changing its name from VAPA, an acronym for Visual and Performing Arts, because it's symptomatic of white supremacy culture. I was always taught that we use acronyms as a convenience. For example, NAACP. Much easier to say instead of every time you say it, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. You just say NAACP. But according to these clowns, that's a sign of systemic racism. It's, it's, it's white supremacist. Now what's really going to be interesting is what happens when there's a program sponsored by or a speaker representing the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People at this school, are they going to demand they not use the acronym? You know, it's one thing to acknowledge a problem. But it is something else entirely when you decide, take it upon yourself freely, willingly, to manufacture a problem. But remember a conversation you and I had not so long ago when I told you many times people that are trying to achieve a certain agenda, they figured out. If we can find the boogeyman, white supremacy, hidden with acronyms, if we can find something that they can't touch, taste, see, or smell, oh, we got them. They'll fall for it hook, line, and sinker. So what about all the black acronyms that are out there? Black entertainment television. Nobody calls it that. Is BET. So is that white supremacy as well? And what, what, what's, what's really ironic here, <laughs> the San Francisco Unified School District says, well, they're targeting people that can't speak English all that well by coming up with these acronyms. So you change from one acronym that could be pronounced VAPA, V-A-P-A, you change that to something that cannot be pronounced. F-S-U-S-D. Really? But in this rush, this headlong push to become politically correct at any cost, 
we end up making ourselves look more stupid than any group of people on the planet. And I don't know what's worse, that they come up with this crap or a lot of y'all buy it. Acronyms. Who knew? Acronyms are a symptom of white supremacy. Now, I don't know about you, but the rationale that they put behind this, well, they do this because it makes it harder for people that can't speak English. Okay, let's say for the sake of the conversation, that's correct. What's easier for a person who can't speak English? Four letters or the whole long name? What's easier for them? NAACP or National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. If you can't read English, which one is going to be easier for you? You see the fallacy in this? You see the moronic ignorance in this? If you can't read English, V-A-P-A, -A, it's going to make a whole lot more sense than S-F-U-S-D and the rest of it. But in this headlong rush to be politically correct, in this headlong rush to shove their agendas down your throat, this is the kind of crap they come up with. And of course, it's not just limited to San Francisco. Enter <laughs> a United States Congresswoman, Representative AOC. Well, I'm sorry, AOC. That could be considered an acronym, although it's initials, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She comes out now, speaking of white supremacy, she comes out and claims that fighting white supremacy is a fundamental part of combating, wait for it, climate change. <laughs> I was wondering how long it was going to take the left to merge the two. I mean, why have to fight a battle on two fronts, white supremacy and climate change? Why have to fight a battle on two fronts where if you can merge them, it's only one battle? <laughs> Fighting white supremacy is a fundamental part of combating climate change. Listen, y'all. If you haven't figured out by now that these folks are idiots, you might be the real idiot here. If you haven't figured out by now that these folks are leading you around by your nose. You the problem. If you don't have enough common sense to look at what they're showing you, listen to what they're telling you, and figure out on your own, this is a freaking nut job, then you need to find a reasonably successful old person as fast as you can and sit down and have as many conversations with them as possible. And hopefully some of their common sense will rub off on you. And believe it or not, these are the people. Acronyms are a sign of white supremacy. To combat white supremacy, we have to combat global warming, climate change. These are the people you elect to run stuff. 
if you don't see by now where this is going, you deserve to be where you are when you get there. It's not like you hadn't been told before. Can't blame it on that. And God knows you can't blame old Clarence because I tell you every chance I get. Final break of today's show. Come back, put that big old pretty bow on this puppy, and we're going to wrap up today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Fight climate change and white supremacy only on the Pelican. Stay close. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. We're making 2021 the year of savings, and it starts right now at Team Toyota. Come get a new 21 Corolla for just $189 a month, or get a 20 Camry for just $19,995. It's a year full of savings starting right now, right here at Team Toyota. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. the feeling sometimes life is wonderful and sometimes it's not cherish the good but always be prepared for life's challenges at private health care we provide the peace of mind you deserve with private health care you'll get the coverage you want and health care you need if your employer doesn't supply health care coverage and you don't qualify for medicare or medicaid you need to give us a call right now. Private health care is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now. Welcome back for the final segment of today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. You know, um, in recent memory, and I, I, don't, I don't have anything to quantify this one way or the other. It's, it's just off the top of my head and, and the gut feeling. But in recent memory, the American jargon, American lexicon, We've come up with more catchphrases and buzzwords than in recent memory. One of the most far-reaching and maybe more popular in recent memory has been the cancel culture. We all know about it now, and it is driven largely, almost exclusively, by those on the left, liberals, Democrats. If you say something that they don't agree with, oh, well, they, this person needs to be canceled. 
need to be censored, not allowed to speak, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. And as a result, a lot of people these days are hesitant to say certain things, number one. And number two, a lot of people are hesitant to give interviews to certain media outlets lest they say the wrong thing. And the next thing you know, oh, here comes the cancel culture. I don't think there is a single person watching right now that will debate the fact that Denzel Washington is an accomplished actor. I don't think there's a single person out there that will not agree that acting aside, Denzel Washington is a decent guy. He's not the guy that, you know, once a year, regular clockwork, you have some kind of scandal. Every other year, regular clockwork, there's some kind of scandal. Child, did you hear about Denzel? You, you, you don't have that kind of stuff. He's a good guy. He's a decent guy and a great actor. Well, don't be surprised if old Denzel gets moved up to the top of the list of the cancel culture. Recently, Denzel gave an interview to the folks at Yahoo News. Now, let me say first of all, I don't know how politically astute Denzel is or is not. I don't know. But in today's cancel culture, I would be particularly concerned, reticent, if you will, to give an interview to a group of folks that call themselves Yahoo News. In essence, news from a bunch of Yahoos. I don't know if I want to give an interview to them, but I digress. In this interview with Yahoo News, Denzel Washington made it crystal clear about his support for police and the military, saying, quote, I don't care much for people who put down America's law enforcement, military, men and women, for whom I have the utmost respect. I have the utmost respect for what they do, for what our soldiers do, people that sacrifice their lives. I just don't care for people who put those kind of people down. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't have the freedom to complain about what they do. As you probably know, Denzel Washington has played law enforcement officers in 13 movies. And for this interview, he was promoting his latest film, The Little Things, where he stars as an L.A. County sheriff who has a checkered past but is out to nab a serial killer. He went on to explain, did Denzel, that his respect for law enforcement was shaped from firsthand knowledge after an incident that he witnessed during a ride along with law enforcement back in 1991. He was researching law enforcement for his role in the film Ricochet. Quote, I went out on a call with the sergeant. We got a call of a man outside his house with a rifle that was distraught. We pulled up, did a U-turn past the house, and came up short of the house. He told me, sit in the car, which I was going to do. I wasn't getting out. He got out. As he got out, another car came screaming up, and two young people jumped out, screaming. As it turned out, the guy was their grandfather. This policeman diffused the entire situation by just remaining calm. The officer was able to diffuse the situation without resorting to any violence. The quote continues, but it showed me 
in an instant how they can lose their life. He didn't overreact. He could have pulled his gun out and shot the people that came driving up real fast. He could have shot the older gentleman that was distraught and a bit confused. I think he was suffering a little bit from dementia. But in one single instant, it taught me, and I never forgot, what our law enforcement people have to deal with moment to moment and second to second. You've heard me say before, the guys and girls in blue that get up every single day and strap it on, despite being underpaid, underappreciated, and outgunned, they get up and willingly do what most of us wouldn't dare do on our best day. And yet, we want to demonize them, castigate them, call them all sorts of ugly names, defund them. Thank God for the likes of Denzel Washington. But from one brother to another, you might want to get ready, Hoss, because they're going to be coming. The cancel culture is not going to appreciate you standing up for what's right and what's decent. Of course, now, my man Marty and I were talking about this during the break. Marty said, well, if there's anybody out there who's got enough money where he can look at the cancel culture and give them one of those, it's Denzel. <laughs> Denzel got plenty of money, Hoss, and if he's taking care of a tenth of it, he ain't got to worry about the cancel culture. Thank God for you, brother, because the old saying is true. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You will fall for anything. And more than likely, the stuff you fall for is going to be stuff that is to your detriment. We need to defund the police. Don't you live in a predominantly black community? Yeah. Aren't y'all most disproportionately affected by crime? Uh, yeah. And you want to defund the police? Oh, uh, let me think about it. I'll get back to you on that one. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> Denzel? I appreciate you more than ever now, brother, just so you know. Time's up, y'all, and I got to go. But this day, just like any other, I give it to you. America, we ain't perfect. But for this old boy's money, it's still the best there is. And God knows there is no place else on his green earth that I'd rather be. Speaking of the good Lord, you realize he loves you, right? And I hope you know that I do, too. Either way, <laughs> There ain't a doggone thing you can do about either one. Take care of yourselves. Let's take care of each other. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.